This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Monday, May 6, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to CNN, Peter Sprigg, a senior fellow for policy studies at the Family Research Council, believes that changing attitudes toward homosexuality have created a new victim in America. Closeted Christians who believe the Bible condemns homosexuality but will not say so publicly for fear of being labeled a hateful bigot. As proof, Sprague points to the backlash that ESPN commentator Chris Brizard sparked recently. Brizard was called a bigot and a purveyor of hate speech when he said an NBA player who had come out as a homosexual was living in open rebellion to God. Sprigg said in the current culture, it takes more courage for someone like Chris Brizard to speak out than for someone like Jason Collins to come out. The media will hail someone who comes out of the closet as a homosexual, but someone who simply expresses their personal religious views about homosexual conduct is attacked. Brian Litfin, a theology professor at Moody Bible Institute in Illinois, says Christians should be able to publicly say that God designed sex to take place within a marriage between a man and a woman. Joe Carter, an evangelical blogger for the Gospel Coalition, says he fears that in the future any church that preaches against homosexuality will be marginalized. Just as many churches now accept divorce, they will accept or remain quiet about sexual practices once considered sinful. Second today, according to the Miami Herald, a growing number of Southern Baptist congregations around the country are quietly moving away from their denomination's historic namesake, worried that it conjures up images of pipe organs, narrow-mindedness, or stuffy formal services. The reality, pastors say, is that many modern Baptist churches mix their liturgy with rock bands and gourmet coffee, and sermons are more likely to be about personal growth than fire and brimstone. While their approach to saving souls has kept up with the times, some pastors feel the name has not. Bill White, the pastor of Christ Journey Church in Florida, which was formerly named University Baptist Church, said 93% of his congregation voted to change the name. The Southern Baptist Convention is currently conducting a study on how people react to the Baptist name. Third today, according to the Associated Press, a police commander in Tanzania says four Saudi Arabian citizens and two others have been arrested following a bomb attack on a Catholic church. Two people died in Sunday's bombing of a newly opened church in the northern city of Arusha. Nearly four dozen people were wounded in the blast just before the church's inaugural mass, which was attended by the Pope's envoy to Tanzania. Eyewitnesses reported that the bomb was thrown from a motorcycle into the church. The driver of the motorcycle is among those who were arrested. Fourth today, according to Reuters, gunmen killed 10 people in an attack on a market and a church in northeast Nigeria before fleeing over the border to Cameroon. The attack took place on Sunday in a farming village near an area that has become a haven for members of the Islamist group Boko Haram. The gunmen opened fire in the village market, killing six people, and then proceeded to the church and opened fire there, killing four more. Nine others were being treated in a hospital for their wounds. Fifth today, according to the Christian Post, President Barack Obama has issued an official greeting for Orthodox Christians celebrating Easter. In the statement, he sent his best wishes to believers celebrating the important holiday and addressed the issue of persecution saying that the holiday is a reminder of the sacrifice Christ made so that we might have eternal life. His decision to choose love in the face of hate and hope in the face of despair is an example we should always strive to follow. But it's especially important to remember this year as members of the Orthodox community have been confronted with persecution and violence, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa. He reaffirmed the United States' commitment to defend freedom of religion around the world. Six today, according to MyStateLine.com, several black religious leaders in Illinois are condemning the state's push for medical marijuana, claiming it will lead to the demise of the African-American community. One local black leader says he agrees because of personal experience. The Rev. Anthony Evans, president of the National Black Church Initiative, said that simply this bill is wrong. 
He argued that the bill puts the state just one step closer to legalizing pot, a drug, he says, that has plagued black America. The bill already passed the House by a slim margin in Springfield, but it still needs to pass the Senate. Even if the Senate passes the medical marijuana bill, Governor Quinn still has not said whether he would sign the bill if it were approved. Seventh today, according to the Indianapolis Journal and Courier, although religious affiliation has decreased among white evangelical and mainline churches from 2007 to 2012, it has stayed relatively steady for the black Protestant church according to a report released last fall by the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life. The percentage of white evangelical Protestant Christians dropped from 21% of U.S. adults in 2007 to 19% in 2012. Among white mainline Protestants, the percentage of affiliation dropped from 18 to 15% from 2007 to 2012. However, 8 or 9 percent of U.S. adults reported affiliation to the black Protestant church for the entire five years. Religious and sociology experts say the report highlights the heightened religiosity of African Americans and the historical significance of the black church as a center of cultural community, political action, and a space to articulate their humanity in the face of oppression. Eighth today, according to the BBC, a leading member of a UN Commission of Inquiry has said that testimony from victims of the conflict in Syria suggests rebels have used the nerve agent Sarine in a chemical weapons attack. Carla Del Ponte told Swiss TV that there were strong concrete suspicions but not yet incontrovertible proof. Ms. Del Ponte did not rule out the possibility that government forces might also have used chemical weapons. The commission later stressed that it had not reached conclusive findings as to their use by any party. Ninth today, according to the Australian, a border standoff between India and China has been defused after troops from both sides retreated from a freezing Himalayan plateau inside Indian-controlled territory. India claimed Chinese troops breached the line of actual control, the temporary and still disputed border between the two, when they set up camp three weeks ago on a plateau near the Karakoram Pass, linking China and Pakistan. India announced on Monday that its foreign minister will visit China this week as the three-week standoff drew to a close. Tenth and finally today, according to the BBC, two Iranians have been sentenced to life in prison by Kenyan court on terrorism-related charges. Ahmad Mohammed and Saeed Mosavi were convicted last week of possessing explosives, which they allegedly planned to use for an attack. The Kenyan judge told reporters, I shudder to imagine the amount of damage that could have been seen. The court said the two Iranians were suspected to have links with a network planning bombings in the capital Nairobi and the coastal city of Mombasa. Defense lawyers say they would appeal the ruling. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read all about these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.